A pearl is formed when an irritant or a parasite works its way into the shell of an oyster or a mussel or a clam. When the shell is damaged, the mollusk then secretes a fluid that coats the irritant. Layer upon layer of this fluid is secreted and deposited onto the irritant until eventually a lustrous pearl is formed. So despite the charms of the pearl's luster, it began its life as an irritant, forcing its way into nature's beautiful shell and wreaking its havoc. But the shell, as a consequence of the wisdom of its natural bounty, has its defences. Pearls are quite appropriate, aren't they, for this pearly king and queen? You know, that's the only claim to royalty that they can really muster up right now. She can clutch her pearls as much as she likes. <gasps> my pearl, my precious pearl. Nobody wants your precious pearl, dear, so you can keep your clam shut. But before we discuss the news that Mejan's project with Netflix has been dumped unceremoniously, I have a secret to share with you. Shut that door, come a little closer, my dear. I'll tell you just the little whispers that I heard last night. And it's nothing scandalous. I'm not pretending that it's some grand revelation. But, you know, I just like to share my whispers to you because I do have an incredible amount of contacts, dears, spanning all across the creative arts in particular, including in publishing and including Penguin Random House, who are publishing Harry's memoir. And I'm not saying if they're existing or former employees of Penguin, but how I made these contacts was through uh, an amour of mine, a romance. I was enjoying a romance with someone who I met clubbing, uh, but who happened to work in the same building as me, 80 Strand in Covent Garden. It's a listed building, used to be called Shell Mech's House, and had lots of companies under it, renting space from it. Uh, everything from traders to publishers, and Penguin were there. And this amour of mine was an IT director or IT engineer or something, so it wasn't involved in the creative side of things, but when we would meet on the rooftop terrace there in our breaks or at lunchtime or at the gym and uh, socialize at the coal hole next door, which is a famous old pub, uh, I'd be introduced to the creatives from Penguin. And so I made a handful of really good chums there, seven or eight of them. Uh, and most of them are still in my life, but especially one or two of them have gone to become great contacts for me. Before I share the whispers, I'm just going to say for legal reasons, that everything I'm disclosing here is gossip, tittle-tattle. Might not necessarily be true, take it with a pinch of salt. Just gossip between friends, so take it as you will or won't. But let's just say that a certain potential authoress, or someone who might consider themselves a poet, uh, you know, when they're out in the garden sitting on a bench one day, might have a thought that they're a poet or, the, or an authoress, but they might be looking on at their partner and thinking, oh, I want a piece of that pie because options are running out. The whispers I'm hearing is that it is not a question of if there will be a similar outpouring of confessions, notes, memories to Harry's, but when, with the intimation that as soon as the publicity drive uh, and the marketing for Harry's tome is done and the oil's been drilled, they'll be ready for another oil site to drill. But there might be certain clashes going on with regards to the authorship of any potential memoirs or autobiographies that come out. Because perhaps this authoress thinks that she's such a gifted writer that she doesn't need a ghostwriter, like Harry's very well-respected ghostwriter. That perhaps she need only uh, make a combination of her own drafts. Uh, coupled with some dictation and interviews to produce a really readable tone. Well, those with experience and those in editing and publishing might not think that that's going to fly, might not think that the talent is there to sell copy, and might in fact think that, yes, you've certainly got a story that's going to sell, whether we like it or not. I mean, it'll sell like hotcakes but don't self-destruct and inflict damage on it by insisting that you write it and everything comes from your perfectly articulated, curlicued, uh, phony handwriting, your phony pen, my dear. Don't kid yourself that you've got that sort of talent. Your talent's in hustling, not in fountain pen bustling. 
I also want to impress upon you guys, I want to urge caution as to anybody who's telling you right now in the press or wherever last week they were going on about Camilla. Uh, giving away revelations of what the book may entail because from what I've heard only a handful of people or less are privy to any kind of uh, real hypnosis or uh, the content of what's going to be, be appearing in that memoir and I'm told that every possible precaution is being taken to prevent leaks and leaks do happen even at the highest level, but that tiny handful of people who know what's going to be appearing in it have a vested interest in keeping that information water tight. These are nuggets of gold because a lot of money is going to be made from that book. That's why there was such a huge advance for it. And the rights to serialize it as well are also gold dust. And they're gonna be manna from heaven to the publishing company. So I would just urge you to exercise a little bit of caution as to what you read in the press about that. So my information regarding the authoress is that it's not if but when, and that that when might be being pulled closer, closer than expected with regards to its potential projected date of release. And the reason I'm telling you this today is because it is connected to the demise of Pearl and the merching ability of the Sussex duo, book sell, Scandal, drama, royalty, and it is the royal connection, of course, that sells the most. The headlines coming up last night were a PR disaster for Harry and Meghan. I'm sure that uh, Sunshine Ballsacks are going to be springing into action uh, very soon with some counter arguments, but oh, it was awful to watch uh, for them. Harry and Meghan's waning US appeal, a threat to TV deals, Sussex's fast losing luster, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's home at risk of being set on fire by selfish smokers. <laughs> Netflix drops Meghan Markle's animated series amid cutbacks. Netflix, Axe, animated series created by Meghan and Harry's production company. Meghan Markle has no affection for Prince Harry. <laughs> Meghan doesn't have a brand and nothing is going anywhere for her. The Harkles 135 million Netflix disaster. Meghan Markle blow as Netflix drops new animated series. Prince Harry and Meghan accused of depriving their kids of family roots. <laughs> it's manna from heaven, isn't it, dear? Almost need a parasol to shield me from all that manna falling from the skies. But we tried to warn them, didn't we? This guy summed it up on Twitter, Sir Frank. Meghan's show about her life named Pearl's been cancelled on Netflix. Such a shame as I was looking forward to a show about a terrible actress that manipulates a gullible prince while telling us how oppressed she is from her Hollywood mansion. I am telling you, my dears, this is now going to be a mad scramble for Meghan. A mad scramble for her to prove her worth and her value. Because Harry, at least you can say, has some success in Victor's games, joyously received. The memoir is going to be a bestseller. That's going to do really well. Better Ups had its bad press this last week, but it's still a raging success, the entire enterprise. Harry is having a lot more success than Meghan. Harry is delivering. He is still having some success, whereas their joint ventures and Meghan's little vanity or pet projects, whatever you're going to call them, ain't. She is scrambling, scrambling because she's learning the hard way that royalty is the seller. It must be such an egregious blow to her ego. No one cares about the Markle name. Nobody cares. Just like any other pearl, she began as a grain of sand on a wide, wide beach, you know, all the beaches of the world, all those billions of grains of sand. She's just one of them. She just managed to infiltrate the oyster. But the world doesn't care about pearls when you've got the Kohenor diamond, my dear. The world does not care. And I urge the royal family, I urge them to keep those Harkles at bay and not have them have any involvement within the Platinum Jubilee. By all means, they can visit the family, but no official photographs, none of the, the, the mixing of Lilibet with them. Keep them away. They made their bed. They can lie in it. They should not be associated with royalty in any way. I don't care what they do. I wish them luck with their enterprises. Just don't do it under the name Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Don't do it with anything to do with royalty. Uh, I know this isn't going to happen, by the way, but this is just why many of us are 
knocked off with them, why we can't accept their merching and besmirching. But I've got to tell you, as gleeful as I know some of you are about the dropping of Pearl, uh, I would like to say that I don't take joy in creative in creative projects being uh, ceremoniously dumped, actually. And uh, this is going to, I know it was only in development stage, but it's going to affect the lives of a lot of creatives who were involved in the project. And I wish them, I wish them not, no harm. I don't wish Megan any harm. I just don't want to see the credits rolling for some ghastly cartoon saying uh, by the Duchess of Sussex. I'm sorry, you besmirched our nation and our mon monarchy. You lost the moral right to use that moniker. And you should just be plain old Meghan Markle and do things away from royalty in Montecito and keep that to yourself, you know, and I wish you very well. Get on with it. Raise money for the good causes that you do. That's fine. But don't use our royals. So for those of you who are gleeful, remember in amongst the joy and the glee of the pearl being dropped, the girl with the pearl. Just remember that these things are all going to make her scramble desperate to prove her worth, her value to her husband and to everybody else. And uh, she knows, she is really starting to know and feel the fact that that worth revolves around her attachment to royalty. That is always going to be where the big bucks are going to come from, the Wonga. Selling stories, writing books, doing interviews, merching her past and her story and her victimhood, along with her hubby. That is always the way it's going to be and that's always going to be the easier way to make those multi-millions that they need. Now, we need to put this dumping of Pearl into perspective. It wasn't the only series that was dumped. There were a few children's series that were dumped and quite a few staff have been fired as well. You know, Netflix are in trouble and whether you believe it or not, the rumour is that they were paid or due to be paid a hundred million dollars for this deal that was a couple of years ago now in 2020 and nothing has been forthcoming other than this series in development. Sheesh Louise, I ask you. They're hoping that Heart of Invictus is going to give them their money's worth. A hundred million dollars? Heart of Invictus sounds like a worthy cause, but is it really going to be that enthralling? That while we see Netflix tanking, tanking viewers, subscribers going down, everything, that that's the kind of thing that's going to save it? I mean, they need another Tiger King, really. You know, the, the glory of a fabulous uh, series like Series 1 of Tiger King. Series 2 is dreadful, but they need something to really get the public in there. Uh, I'm not sure that Harry and Heart of Invictus, uh, as worthy as much of that is, uh, is going to really capture the imagination to the tune of a hundred million bucks, but I could be very wrong. I've got nothing against Netflix. I'm actually a fan of Netflix, but I have let my subscription lapse of late. There's nothing there that I really want to see at the moment. I've got to tell you, I had, to, I have loved fabulous shows on Netflix. I am a great fan of The Crown. Most people think that there's certainly an anti-monarchist sentiment running throughout it, but it doesn't mean that I don't really enjoy it as a great piece of fiction. Uh, it, it's good. Uh, I also really love, for comfort watching, there's a series called Virgin River. <laughs> uh, no, they didn't name it after me. Uh, Virgin River, I'm looking forward to the new series of that. It's not even great, it's just, uh, it's like a comfort watch, I, I rather enjoy it. Also, I used to watch Grace and Frankie, but that's gone on for 6,000 series now, way too much. Orange is the New Black was really good in its, in its heyday. Uh, RuPaul's Drag Race was on there for a while. We've actually got a view, uh, one of my subscribers is Pit Crew, in RuPaul's uh, Pit Crew. And I also went through a phase of really loving their, they have sort of crime or suspense factual documentaries, rather like Tiger King that are like little Matryoshka dolls, you know, each episode reveals a different part of the story, like a Russian doll. And one of them uh, that comes to mind was the one, Don't F with Cats. That's a really disturbing one, but just so brilliant. But it seems that this is a time for ruthless shrinkage at Netflix. You know, they want to trim the fat off the bone and do what they can to salvage with what they know is going to be bestsellers and which they know isn't going to drain them of finance. And this is why I think Archwell Productions will start looking for vehicles to present both Mejn and uh, Harry Bold in ways that don't involve such high production values, like an animated series involves many production elements, cast and crew extraordinaire, uh, a lot of costs, whereas I'm just using it as an example. You know, the Oprah interview, all they needed was Oprah's garden, the equipment they use, 
And, you know, they don't need multiple studios. They don't need to hire vast amounts of uh, crew and cast. So I think that that is the direction that Archwell will head in. Perhaps not being so ambitious with some of the production values, but taking it down to what the public really want to see and will be cheaply made, cheap to produce. No one cares about Megan's artistic vision or her talent or making cartoons. No one cares. She hasn't got that kind of talent. All she's got a talent for is being shady. So that is why I think that more shady, shady, shady material is to come. Many happy returns to Princess Charlotte, who turns a glorious seven years old today. We've been treated to these charming photos taken by the Duchess of Cambridge. And here's the young princess in a patch of bluebells near their Norfolk home and the hall. And that's all of the family dog, little black spaniel there, only two years old, in her first official photograph with the family. William and Catherine acquired Orla just before the death of their beloved dog Lupo. And Orla was actually bred by Jimmy Middleton, Catherine's brother. It's quite a card. Orla's mother is a dog called Luna, and she was sister to Lupo. So Orla is actually the late Lupo's beloved cousin. So much felicity to be had there with that gappy grin on our young princess holding a small bunch of wildflowers or daisies. I was really excited by this news. You know that I'm a huge fan of sexy Camilla. I love the woman and she's going to be gracing the cover of Vogue, our future queen. Madonna's going to have to reinvent, rewrite that rap, isn't she, Betty Davis? Anne Monroe, Camilla Shand, DiMaggio. So all going to have to be there, my dear, on the cover of a magazine. A secret shoot took place last week with an interview as well. Uh, some of the Palisades were there, just a small handful, said to be sworn to secrecy. And, uh, you know, this isn't going to be music to Meiji's ears either, because she was Flavor of the Month, you see, in 2019. She guest edited an edition of Vogue, the September edition. She was Flavor of the Month, named all her favorite women as usual. Boring, boring, boring. And everyone thought, oh, Edward Enninfall is now editor-in-chief. And, you know, he, he doesn't care about the, the royal family and, you know, the old school and, you know, all these white people, <laughs> boring old white people, you know, ushering in the new. It's all about Meji and her style, that kind of thing. They really have no understanding. Really have no understanding, my dear. Trends. Like the Harkles, they're a trend. Trends come and go. They won't be trendy when they're 60. Royalty remains. Royalty remains, my dear. And Edward, like everybody else, Edward Enninful has been charmed by Camilla. And this has been in the pipeline a long time. And royalty have a tradition with Vogue going back many years. Only recently Her Majesty graced the cover to celebrate her Platinum Jubilee. Diana, Catherine... And they've all graced the cover as well and played their part. If you were the hot thing in 2019, the only thing you can guarantee, my dear, is that like a microwaved lasagna, you're going to go cold. Which is rather convenient because revenge is a dish best served cold. Camilla and Edward have enjoyed cosy encounters going back in time and it will go forth in time. Royalty remains. And the Harkles, who grace Time magazine, most influential people in the world. <laughs> Oh, what a joy. Oh, what a joy. That was their time. Well done, my dears. That was your airbrushed, filtered, reimagined time in the sun. So I'm so glad that you enjoyed it, my dears. But that time is gone. Gone! So I'm very excited to see how our queen in waiting is going to look. I hope she wears a lovely fur stole. That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Just naked, naked, except draped in furs, my dear. White furs and diamonds. That's how I want our future queen. And then on the other end of the scale, there's Fergie. Oh, that woman. I mean, you know, we love her, but we don't as well. Uh, a mixture of the two. Fergie Wergy. Got the lurgy. She's been pictured and... Uh, <laughs> These slippers she's wearing, have you seen them? Never complain, never explain on her slippers she wore out. The press said it's a cryptic message. <laughs> uh, never explain, no, it's not actually a mantra of the Queen's. You know, it's always bandied about. 
yes, they, it is true, they never complain, or rarely, uh, never explain, but she never said it, it was Benjamin Disraeli, our, our, our Prime Minister here in Britain uh, centuries ago. It, it, the royal family haven't said it, but of course they do live by a similar ethos, but uh, there it is, uh, on her feet. I only she had reminded herself of that maxim when she was dishing it all out on Oprah, you know, with her episodes of Sarah's life or whatever it was. Uh, Oh, that vulgarity. She was at it long before Mejon. Uh, terrible. But she was photographed. Oswald Mayfair, some private members club, uh, usually joined her in this bold military style jacket with the navy slippers in blue velvet. She has actually worn them in the past. Uh, in 2019, she was spotted wearing them to a gallery in Toronto. The slippers were a collaboration between a couple of designers, Del Toro, an Italian handmade shoe designer I think and a rotten roach and I see they did a few different ones one saying favorite child one saying love bug all these sort of whimsical things and similar designs seem to go for around 425 bucks and here's a ne'er seen before photograph of our bonnie prince charlie this photograph of him when he was 13 years old he looks rather mature there doesn't he for 13 years old with his beetles haircut it's marking the 60th anniversary of his first day at that school and the photographs show him on stage because he was said to be the most excellent actor of his year. Oh, and here's a photograph of Charles's old bedroom. This is where he used to sleep when he was at Gordonston, but it's now a girl's dormitory. Thanks for popping in to sip the tea with me, my fruits. I look forward to sipping with you again in the next broadcast. And if you'd like to treat me to a cup of tea or coffee, my tip jar is in the description box below. Stay sovereign. Channel the royal spirit and cast not pearls before swine. Toodle pip.